Hello, hello, my name is Leo and welcome to a new and quick tutorial by Blau Films. Today we will be looking at how I do most of my post-processing of CGI shots and even a technique that once in a while I apply to live action footage. We're currently working on our sci-fi short Syntactic Labyrinth about what would happen if our collective knowledge got stored into a space vessel and sent out to space with only two supercomputers managing the whole situation. Now when I make CGI renders, or let's say specifically for Syntactic Labyrinths, I have to do a 235 to 1 conversion of the footage. Now this is a personal preference technique that varies from artist to artist, and take whatever I say with a grain of salt. If you enjoy the way that I do my post-processing, feel free to copy it. If you have your own preferred method, feel free to use that. Right now I'm in After Effects, I got my Syntactic Labyrinth file for scene 1 opened up and I got this scene over here of Thinker, which is one of the two supercomputers in the film. Now Thinker has been modeled by the very talented Adon Gorazio. He works a lot in mech design and I'm sure you've probably seen his work somewhere around there. So right now I would like to take a look at this shot where Thinker is being scanned by this red laser and we have a 16 by 9 aspect ratio. This is basically how I got it rendered straight from Cinema 4D with Corona Renderer. Now before I start moving this to a 235 to 1 composition, I'm first going to be doing the final compositing. Now we have a window in the back. As you can see, if I toggle this switch, you can see that our glass is somewhat translucent. And I have an HDR that I use for this scene in CG and I'm basically just applying that HDR to the background over there. Now I am adding a adjustment layer in between those two layers with a camera lens blur of 10 and the aspect ratio set to 0 0.5. Now 0 0.5 makes sure that we get this vertical bokeh similar to what you are seeing here on the vertical bokeh that we have in our shot as well. Now I have a exposure adjustment right on top. This is basically just darkening down the shot with our gamma correction and increasing the exposure of the lights over here. And finally I have another adjustment layer with a rectangular mask that has a feather of 200 pixels. And that is just using a 0.5 exposure to boost all the values on the top end here. Now what we're doing with that is we're emphasizing the soft top lighting that we're getting in this scene. Eric Alcaraz, the cinematographer who you've probably seen some of our lighting mastery tutorials with, the two of us spent a long time working on these shots early in the process of Syntactic Labyrinth. We were trying to get that very deep shadow look but still very diffused and just adding those adjustment layers in post will emphasize that idea. Now the next step is turning this into a 235 to 1 aspect ratio and the way that I'm doing that is I am selecting all these layers and hitting command shift C to pre-compose them and now we have them all together and I'm going to be making two duplicates. Now I'm quickly going to rename them R, G and B. One of the things that I would like to do, this is also a good tip to cinematographers, if you want to make your shot 235 to 1, as opposed to just cropping them on the top and the bottom, what I would like to do is squish in the edges and then apply a little bit of a offset between the RGB color channels. And then when you add them all together, you will have the main colored image back in the center with a little bit of chromatic aberration at the edges. And you will kind of have to just mess with the settings to get it perfectly the way you want it. So first we're gonna turn off the top two layers and with the R layer selected I'm gonna go to Effect, Distort and Bezier Warp. Now what that does is create this power map around your entire shot and what we want to be looking at is all these vertices. So we go to top left vertex and you would have to play with the settings yourself, but I'm going for a value of 30 over here. And if I toggle this switch, you'll be able to see what we're doing there. Perfect. Now for the right top vertex, we're going for 30 as well. Then we have the bottom right vertex. And what we're doing there is I'm just typing in negative 30 and we're subtracting 30 from there. 
it's actually very handy to know that you can do all of your calculations inside of After Effects. You can use the negative tool, you can use the plus tool, you can divide with the slash, or you can do a multiplication with the star. So again, at the bottom left, ooh, got the wrong one selected. At the left bottom vertex, we're gonna do negative 30 and hit okay, perfect. Now, basically, the next thing we want to do is I'm going to copy the Bezier warp and paste it inside of the G and the B channel. Now, the next thing I will do is with the R selected, I'm going to go into channel and set shift channels. Now, here immediately you can see we have take red from red, green from green and blue from blue. We're going to set green to full off and blue to full off. This way, we're only letting the red channel through. On the G, we're going to apply the same effect, but we are going to turn off the red and we're going to turn off the blue. Here you go. We've only got the green channel shining through. And on the final one, we'll do the same thing. Shift channels, turn off the red and turn off the green this time. Turn that on. There you go. We've only got the blue channel shining through. We're going to select the green and the blue channel and change the transfer mode to add. And if you can see, we've got exactly the same image we had in the beginning. The RGB values have added back up to each other and white is white and black is black and all the colors in between are what they should be. Now, the next thing that I would like to do is I would like to select the G and go to distort optics compensation. Now, the way optics compensation work is that you're able to change the field of view of a virtual camera, technically, looking at our shot. So what I would like to do is select reverse lens distortion and give it a very subtle value of something like 8. And this is a little bit difficult to see, but if I zoom in here to the edges, you'll be able to see that we're getting this green and this purple right around the white over here. And that's your chromatic aberration. That's where you're offsetting the value of the green channel. And it's adding to different points on the G and the B layer. Next, we're going to copy the optics compensation effect and paste it right onto the B layer. And what that did now is that we have changed the green and purple look to be this cyan and red look, more of a classic chromatic aberration look. Now, you don't want to be overdoing this. The only reason we're using this is to add a little bit more of a lens imperfection effect. If you're working with live action footage and you have been using some very good lenses or some crazy, super shitty lenses, you probably don't need to be adding this. But especially if you're going straight out of a CG render, it's great to be adding a little bit of lens imperfections here and there to sell that believability of the shot. The next thing that I would like to do is I would go to composition up here, select composition settings, and then we can change this to a 235 to one aspect ratio. Now I know that would be 871 pixels and you can get a confirmation over here where it says two comma 35. Hit okay. And there you go. Now your shot is 235 to 1 with a little bit of a squish and stretch on the top and the bottom. I'm going to reposition my shot a little bit. Somewhere here is fine. And the next thing I would like to do is I would like to create a new adjustment layer. This one will create a little bit of a fall off with a blur map on the edges. I will go up here to the elliptical mask tool and double click it. And the way that I like to do it, kind of creating that anamorphic lens effect, is by holding shift and dragging these anchor points all the way to the bottom. Here you go. This way, kind of creating this rectangular oval look. Now I'm going to change the mask to subtract and I'm going to guesstimate somewhere around 200 pixels. This would vary on the resolution of your shot and on the way that you want it to look in your shot, of course. I'm going to call this lens blur. I will go to effect, blur and sharpen, camera lens blur. There you go. 
I'm gonna quickly turn off the visibility of our mask and let's fit this to comp. Mm. Yeah, there you go. Command Shift H will hide all the tools. And the first thing we wanna do is we're seeing this edge over here. So we wanna click on repeat edge pixels. And then we wanna change the aspect ratio to be 0 0.5. There you go. And that's looking pretty good with the default settings. If I bump that up, you'll get a clear idea of what's happening, but you'll start to get some spreading of the pixels over here. And that's creating a pretty unnatural result. So I'm gonna stick to five or let's say seven. There you go, seven's looking good. And then I'm gonna go and add a color correction exposure effect. I'm just gonna crunch the gamma a little bit on the edges. 0 0.9 would be fine. If I toggle that on and off, you'll be able to see we are creating a little bit of a vignetting effect, but basically what we're doing, we're telling a very specific story with this shot, right? We're telling the story of this abstract looking device that's being scanned. We want our eyes to, as quickly as possible when we cut to this shot, center onto the action that's right in the middle of the screen. And a little bit of a vignetting effect is usually a great tool to focus the audience. And, you know, we're just using it a little bit, just a little bit. Now, the next thing I would like to do is I'm going to add a new adjustment layer. And I'm going to call this Film Processing. Now, if you are familiar with either shooting on film or shooting digitally with a variety of cameras, there is a particular way in which each camera and each film stock processes the colors that it receives. When you're working in CG, there are many tools and many render engines that have some kind of integrated LUT system or some kind of filmic recreation palette, but, but you're always trying to step away from the linear color space look, the straight CG, everything looks unprocessed and digital. So what I would like to do here is add a little bit of a variation in the highlights, midtones, and shadows. And the look that me and Eric decided for this film really resembles that classic Kodak film stock. And there's a large variety within Kodak film stock, but what I like to do is go up here to effect, color correction, and then select this tritone effect. So what this does is it separates your highlights, midtones, and shadows, and assigns particular colors to it. Now what we can do here is, I would like to go to somewhere within the yellow range. Now keep your cursor all the way at the top. We don't want to be losing highlight intensity. I'm gonna go here towards the 15% saturation. For the midtones, I would like to go somewhere around this green area here. And then finally for the shadows, I would like to go all the way here within the purple and the blue area and select a very deep purple, somewhere around here. Now right now, this doesn't look great, but if you get this blend with original curve here, you can start seeing this is like a uh, vintage Instagram filter and the more you start blending it with the original, the more natural it starts to become. The lower you blend with the original, the worse the processing has been, you could say. And around the 90%, you can see we're adding a very subtle blend of colors. And there you go. Now, the final thing that I would like to add to this shot is just a little bit of film grain. The footage that we have here has a little bit of digital render noise. Um, this is mainly due to being rendered at a fairly low amount of passes, but the noise is mainly present in the shallow depth of field area. Now, we can fix that by adding a little bit of film grain of ourselves. Now, I have this Cine Classico that I would like to drag right on top. And the first thing that I would like to do is I would like to scale it down to fit the composition. And if I set that to soft light, you'll see that in this particular case, it will brighten up the image. Now, most film grain is balanced to be 50% gray. If you're using this one, which isn't, you can just simply go to color correction, curves, and then take the slider all the way to the right and bring it somewhere around here. 
Now the way colors and light values are mapped is like some kind of logarithmic curve. So you don't want to be here. You want to be somewhere around here. And there you go. If you toggle it on and off, it seems to be giving us a pretty natural value. So that's basically it. I've been using this post-processing technique for quite a lot of the shots that I've been doing. If you don't want to be changing the aspect ratio, I basically just avoid the Bezier warp, but I do tend to stick to some of the other techniques like the lens blur and the film processing layer. Thank you so much to everybody for watching these tutorials. I'm actually very excited to see how this channel is steadily growing and we will keep the growth up because there is so much content coming up. Our sci-fi film, Syntactic Labyrinths, we're pretty close to completion. We have so many talented artists involved in this film and I would love to share the knowledge of everything I learned in this production and everything all the people involved have been doing and what they have been learning. Be sure to subscribe to stay tuned to all the different learning opportunities we will be sharing. And before I go, I would like to have a quick shout out to ourselves, I guess, and our ArtStation store. I'll leave the link in the description below, but if you go to store over here, we have a bunch of learning assets and tools for you to use. If you are a compositor or a cinematographer who needs to do some sky replacement, we have some tutorials on the channel for very advanced 3D tracking sky replacement. And we have all of these cloud packs over here. I guess they are the best cloud packs in the game right now, if I say so myself. I've tried quite a few of them out and, and I made these two fill up the gaps that the other ones were missing, right? So we have the clear sky assets, the overcast assets. We even have this above the horizon assets for if you're trying to do any compositing of, I don't know, a fighter jet in the sky. Um, except for that, we have some other assets like industrial decals pack and safety sticker decals. If you're a 3D modeler or a texture artist and you want to make your scenes look more and more believable, Almost everything in life has some kind of decals on it, so be sure to check those out then. For other people working within science fiction or for those trying to do some day for night conversion, be sure to check out this as well. It's our 100 organic Starfields pack. I think this is actually one of the more fun products we have and one of those that I've been using consistently on a bunch of different projects. So yeah, be sure to get that as well. And thank you very much for watching. I hope you all have a great day. And uh, cheers. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.